How's it going guys? Cody guys back again dropping yet another video. Right guys, as you can see from the title, uh, this vlog is going to be on me reading a letter from a serial killer called Stephen Port. Stephen Port was known as the Grinder Killer. Right? Uh, the, the letter was dated the 27th of the 11th, 2015. The letter reads... Dear Cody, just received your letter dated 19th of November. This week has been slightly better as started working in the ink shop, just filling up ink cartridges for printers. But time goes fast. So the day goes a bit quicker and more guys speak to me now. And they don't seem bothered about why I am here. They just take me at face value. One guy I've been working with said he thinks I'm a really nice, polite guy. and said, you don't seem like a murderer. Told him, I'm not. And that I would sooner kill myself than take another's life. Anyway, I only get £2.60 a day, Monday to Thursday. But at least it helps me buy essentials. But no luxuries though, as just a pack of coffee is £3.99. And Jaffa cakes are a pound. They're gone in one go, as I love them. Laugh out loud. I finally have an optician appointment for Monday. So I should have my glasses soon. And my writing will become more readable, I hope. So what have you been doing this week? Question mark. I have lots of memories from my life while being in here. I've remembered a lot of things I haven't thought about in ages. My childhood was quite normal. My dad was strict, but never abused me. My mum is quiet, but speaks her mind when she wants to. I always had what I wanted within reason. At school, I wasn't really bullied, but I wasn't. But I was used to get called stretch because I was tall and skinny. But at sixteen. I started going to the gym after reading some books on bodybuilding. After a few months, my arms and shoulders started to get bigger. So I didn't look like a beanpole anymore and became better at sports and no one would bully me. Well, he just said he wasn't bullied, but now he's saying that no one he wouldn't bully him anymore. Um, I was quite shy, but I had plenty of friends as I was more of a jock, like because I was good at basketball. For those who don't know, jock is a term used in America for people that are like sporty and stuff. Um, my ex-boyfriend was disowned when he came out as gay at 14. Put into care but his foster parents sexually abused him. He ran away a few times until he was put into his granddad's care who is 76. He did his best but with him having autism and ADHD he was a very difficult by then with his moods. He could become very aggressive. However, at 18 he met me online. And at first he just stayed a week at a time. His grandfather used to drive him down until I taught him to drive. And he got his own car. But after two months he moved in with me for the first year. We had a normal relationship with normal sex. I know your prob's thinking, was I the older guy? But I never had to ply him with drink. Didn't know about drugs back then. As he was always horny. And he was really loving and we did everything together. He had his moods at times and had to call his grandfather to come down and help me as he would run out screaming and shouting in the street a few times. The neighbours called the police, but it wasn't from anything I did. Could be from one of his friends online upset him or if I got a text from a friend, he would get jealous very quickly as he wanted my full attention. No one else could have me. He didn't like change. Everything had to be as he wanted. During the second year, he met a friend online who was his age. There wasn't anything sexual between them, so I didn't worry. But he gave me methadrone and said, try it with Stephen, your boyfriend. So we did So we did it to give a try. It was amazing. But after a while, he would want me to try other stuff. So his friend gave him G, GHB. He was sick at first, but he kept wanting more. Then after a while, he started getting into the habit of taking G, GHB, and being very submissive. He said, do what you want to me, I trust you. He wanted me to have control over him, and he wanted me to tie him to the bed. Also, can only guess that it was because he was abused when he was younger, that now it became a part of him. But instead of being forced to do it, he wanted to be completely submissive. Sorry, I am rambling again. I know you want to know more about me and not my ex-boyfriend's lol. But he was such a big part of my life for four years. But that was back in 2013. When we split up, we did remain friends. But he didn't get on that well with my new boyfriend. They would clash and argue. 
and they would both fight for my attention. So he went back to live with his grandfather and the new boyfriend moved in, lol. Right, now, I, right, I was... Um, I was sexually abused as a kid, yeah. But what I said to him was, somebody drugged me, right? So this is what he says. He says, did you report this guy who drugged you? Right? I was trying to get a response from him because obviously his scenario, it reflected his situation. So that's why I dropped that line. He said, I could never do that as what's the point of sex if you're both not enjoying it. I do prefer one-on-one -on -one sex rather than group sex as I like his full attention and I want to give him mine. And it's so much better when kissing and cuddling also, which you don't do in a group orgy. It's just about getting in and coming, etc. I prefer the real love. I am being charged with administering a drug with the intent to cause harm, which is murder times four. I was just charged with perverting the course of justice, as when my friend had the bad effect, I took him outside and left him there when police arrived and said I didn't know him. That wasn't actually true, guys. If you look at the first letter, they actually... Um, the first letter that I read from him, he, he, he said that he took him outside, dumped him, and because the police and ambulance turned up, he ran inside and stuff. So that's, and then eventually they came to speak to him because it was the, the police took his phone of the first victim and found out he'd gone round to meet him. So it wasn't his friend; they were just there to have sex with each other. So it says here. So I, I was charged with perverting the course of justice as when my when my friend had the bad effect, I took him outside and left him there when the police arrived and said i didn't know him as i was scared that, that they would accuse me of taking drugs with him and now they're accusing me of giving him the drugs to intentionally kill him which is so ridiculous he was my friend i would never do that and i certainly didn't do that to my other friends it's more it's most likely these guys had too much g at a party and the group of guys took them to a park to avoid being done for drugs etc or even maybe the guys enjoyed sex outside. I have done it in the past. It's quite exciting in the fresh air. Anyway, I'm not allowed to discuss my case as these letters could be used as evidence. He, he, guys, he talks about his case. He just talks about his case. Then he says he's not allowed to. He did it in the first letter. He said, I'm not allowed to talk about my case. Spoke about his case. And then he said he's not allowed to. And then continued to. It's further down my timeline, guys, if you want to if you want to read it. Uh, hear, hear it even. He says it could be used as evidence, but I have nothing to hide. I told the police everything I've already mentioned to you. My role models used to be Van Damme, Arnold Schwarzenegger, also Chuck Norris and Sliced Alone. I took up martial arts and became a senior grade in Taekwondo and won five silvers at British Nationals and a bronze at the English Championships. But as you have seen from my picks, I've never really gained big muscles, just slim and toned because I had a really good six pack. I got a job as an underwear model for Jasper Conran. Debenhams range and I used to have long blonde hair so I looked like a surfer and I did swimwear too just looking back at your letter trying to answer as many of your questions as I can I like Doctor Who I wish I had a TARDIS laugh out loud I like the stories and adventures Matt Smith was my favourite but after watching a few episodes with a new guy I think he's amazing and just fits the part as he looks older it makes more sense as he's supposed to be 2000 years old I did like David Tennant though. I do like Family Guy and Futurama, but the main cartoons I like are Transformers and Marvel Avengers. This man was like 40. Uh, have, I have been to Manchester's Gay Village. I was in a club there on New Year's Eve slash New Year's Day back in 2007. I think I was with a boyfriend who, who lived in York. I was overseeing an opening of a restaurant in Leeds. I was helping train the staff and managers. I was living in a travel lodge paid for by my company. I used to take the boyfriend out for dinner and charge it to the company. They never did know they were paying for two. Laugh out loud. Get my canteen ordered tomorrow morning. More Jaffa cakes. Yummy. Thanks again for sending the £25. I won't say no if you want to send me more. He he he. I really do appreciate your loyalty and friendship. I wish you was my boyfriend. Can't wait to meet you when I get out of here. Have a great weekend. Best regards, Stephen Port. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Now, when you write to these people, guys, right, you've got to assume, right? I wrote to Dennis Nielsen, said I was a, like a gay man. Wrote to Port, said I was a gay man. Wrote to Maraid Philport, like, feeling sorry for and stuff like that. You've got to make yourself relevant to these people that you are writing to, because if you're not, they'll cut you off straight away. I wrote to Sutcliffe um, when he was in Broadmoor. Is 
secure, his mental health nurse and his psychiatrist wrote back saying he didn't want to speak to me. I wrote to Brady, won Brady's trust, um, wrote to Marie Philpott, uh, won her trust and stuff. She fell in love with me and stuff and was besotted. Um, who else? Dennis Nielsen um, wrote to him, he wrote back and stuff. I don't have the letters. I've got, I think there's one letter that I've got and it was a, um, he types it up on a typewriter. So like I say, guys, right, when, when you write to these people, you've got to make yourself relevant to them. Uh, I said that I, I was sexually abused as a kid, that's true. But um, I said, oh, I've been drugged and someone like raped me or something like that. And it, what I was trying to do is get an emotional response from him to see how he what he would write. This is a man that was obviously arrested in relation to the deaths of four gay men down in Barking, down in London, right, um, a few, like back in 2015. Um, I put a, I'll put a link in the wiki description below. Uh, I'll put a link to the Wikipedia page reference Stephen Port in the description below so you can read it at your own leisure. The case, you guys are probably aware of the case and stuff like that. You come to this channel, so you're probably aware of uh, Stephen Port and the crimes that he committed. Um, like I say, very childlike in his writings. He's 40 odd year old and he's into like Avengers, Doctor Who, all this sort of stuff. And then, like I say, He's not, he's, not, he's not sorry for what he's done. And as he started to write to me more and more, he actually became, he became more guarded. But by that time, it was too late. He'd opened up to me and told me pretty much everything. In the first letter, he's describing, oh, I mean, he's described as a serial killer, which is ridiculous. If I was going to kill somebody, I'd hit him over the head with a rolling pin. And he's, the thing is, do you believe that he was a, an underwear model? This is a man that's fucking, that was bald that wore a toupee. Right. sort of Donald Trump-esque toupee thing that he wore. Um, he goes on to talk about it in some of the other letters and stuff. But uh, he was an absolute predator. He liked younger guys. Um, he Googled um, drug rape and stuff like that. So just an absolute predator, guys, of the highest order. Um, if he if he would have stayed out of prison, if he would never have been convicted or never been found out, he would have definitely killed more people. Um, it was a predator, guys. He liked this this sexual dominance over people and stuff. And like I say, by drugging them, um, it's just absolutely crazy. But you'll have to let me know what you think about the letter, about the, the content and stuff like that. I'm sorry that it's sort of all over when I'm reading it. I'm stopped starting. I'm trying to find his words because he doesn't, I can't, I don't have the letters from him anymore. I've got pictures of the, of the letters, which you'll see at the beginning of the video. And I have to, he writes like he's sort of dyslexic the way he writes and stuff. So I've got to try and put it in perspective. So when I'm writing it and stuff, some sometimes the sentence won't make sense because there's words missing because I think he's dyslexic. Um, what he did as well with one of his victims, he dragged him. Two of the bodies were found in a, the same park by the same dog walker um, within a matter of weeks. And what he did, the, se the third person, I think it was the third person he killed, he dragged them to this graveyard embarking and then um he put he wrote a suicide note in his handwriting right and like the hand that like the this suicide note was written by the person that was dead stating he killed the other person that was found in the graveyard but it was Stephen Port's handwriting and his family the victim's family was like well that's not our son's handwriting so like I say he, he not criminal, not not clever when it comes to criminal uh, side of things. The police fucked up massively. They referred themselves to the IPCC, which is now uh, it's been renamed and rebranded and stuff. Um, I've always had a vested interest in uh, crime guys and why people do what they do. If I was an academic, I probably would have gone down the criminology route or forensic psychology route. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't academic and I went down the, the route of the gangs, criminals and all that sort of stuff. Um, was a bad decision looking back if I had my time again I would have done it differently I would have embraced education and I would have tried to make something of myself and gone down the academic route but unfortunately I went down the criminal route and uh, I've met some fantastic people I've spoken at universities I do numerous interviews I do these vlogs which you guys seem to take to very very well um, and it's interesting I, normal things don't interest me guys I, I, by the time for me life is about life experience and stuff and when I'm lay on my deathbed I don't want to be saying oh I wish I did this I wish I did that I'll be like you know what I did this I did that I've lived a crazy life um, I'm only 34 and I've lived the life of someone that's double my age 100% I 
on that note, guys, I'm going to leave this video here, guys. Let me know what you think about the comments in the comment section below. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to the Wikipedia page reference Stephen Port, and I'm going to do another video reference another letter from Stephen Port very shortly. Speak to you all soon, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Cody out.